Hey, what's going on, my friends? My name is Chris Selim from Mixdown Online, and I'm once again very happy to be collaborating with CCLI for this video series. In this video series, I'm sharing with you how you can record yourself from home to be able to record uh, your worship songs, worship arrangements, and then share them with your worship teams and friends. So if you're a worship leader, a church musician or church music director, and you're a bit confused with home recording, you're going to enjoy this video series. Now on this uh, video, I'm going to be looking at recording audio things to consider when recording in one single room, which is probably the case for a lot of you. So that's why in today's video, I'm gonna be recording audio within the same room. So things we need to consider when recording out of the same room as your computer and your main uh, studio monitors is when you record audio using a microphone, you need to turn off your studio monitors and use headphones, okay? Or else uh, you're gonna risk I rang into some feedback and this is not something that you want. It's pretty annoying and it's not good for the recording either. Okay, so just make sure you use a pair of headphones when recording audio with a microphone. So today I'm gonna to be recording some electric and acoustic guitars and also some vocals. So first, let's jump in Cubase and set ourselves up to be able to record some audio. So let's set that up on my vocal track. First, what I need to, uh, to check is the input. I just wanna make sure that my input is at the correct input out of my sound interface. So I'm gonna be using input number one, okay, the first preamp out of my interface. So on my vocal channel, my vocal track, I'm gonna make sure that input one is the one selected. I'm gonna use this microphone, one, two, one, two. So now I have some signal coming in that first input channel that we see on the left here. Now this channel is only the input channel. It's not my vocal track, okay? My vocal track is this one right here. So this input channel is input channel number one, and this is what I have here on my vocal track. Okay, I'm gonna put on my headphones, and I'm gonna start recording on that track just to test it out. One, two, testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Okay, gonna have a quick listen. One, two, testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Okay, so that works pretty well, but the problem is I can't hear myself and I need to fix that up. So to be able to hear myself when recording, which is, you know, the thing you need to do, uh, you need to activate the monitor switch right here, okay? And that will allow you to monitor your signal coming into that track. One, one, two, one, two. One, two. There you go. One, two. Okay, okay now, now I have a bit of a delay going on, which is quite annoying. And this is what I want to talk to you about. Now, that delay is called latency. And latency is the time it takes for the signal to go from your sound interface to the computer to your recording software, out of your recording software, back to your sound interface, and then your studio monitors or headphones. That entire process, that route, take some time. So the time it takes for the signal to go through all of that route is called latency. And you can manage that amount of latency if you want to. So let's go into studio and studio setup. Uh, so if I select my Yamaha Steinberg sound interface and I click on control panel, I'm going to get to this window, um, which is going to allow me to select different buffer sizes. And this is what I need to focus on. Uh, so if I bring that up to 2048, which is a high buffer size, it's going to give me a lot of latency. One, two, two. one, one two, two, testing. testing. That is quite annoying. Okay, so I'm going to bring that down to 64 samples. One, two, testing, one, two, testing. That is way more manageable, okay? So I'm gonna keep that at a lower buffer size. Now, the thing is, the lower the buffer size, the harder it is on your computer. So if you have a slow computer or a computer without a lot of processing, that is gonna be a problem. But if you're working with a fast computer with a high processing power, um, you'll be okay for sure. But for recording, if you wanna monitor yourself through the software, through Cubase, you'll need to get to the lowest buffer size possible to avoid that uh, annoying latency. When mixing, when adding a bunch of plugins that is gonna be a bit more hard on your computer, now using a high buffer size, now this is gonna free up some, some processing power off your computer and it's gonna give you a chance to, uh, to work with a, a lot of plugins at the same time. So there's a use of using a high buffer size with 
you know, a high latency because in mixing, latency doesn't matter much. Okay, but in recording, it's another story. So we have another option that we can use. So if your computer is not fast enough or you find that the tiny latency a bit annoying, um, and that will depend on what you're recording, um, you can also uh, monitor directly from the sound interface. Cubase allows us to do so within the software. So let's go back in studio, studio setup, and I'm going to activate that direct monitoring. So if you have that option available, that means your sound interface supports direct monitoring. If that option is grayed out, that means your interface doesn't support it. So mine does. I'm going to select a direct monitoring, click on OK. And now if I activate my monitor and now I'm getting a signal with no latency. But the downside is I'm not going to be able to use some plugins. So if I want to use a plugin directly on that track while recording and I want to monitor the effect of that plugin, for example, the reverb, um, or later on, we're going to be recording some electric guitars and we're going to use a NAM simulator. In that case, using it in direct monitoring is not going to work. I'm only going to be able to, to uh, monitor the direct signal. Some interfaces like this one will have a DSP chip that will allow you to use internal plugins or processing effects. So you'll have the advantage of using direct monitoring and also using some effects for monitoring purposes, uh, which is quite nice. But most of the interfaces out there won't have that option. Now you know the difference between the two ways you can monitor yourself using your DAW, and especially in this case, Cubase. Now on my end for this recording session, I'm gonna be using both methods. Um, and for vocals, I'm gonna go straight to the direct monitoring, and for uh, electric guitar, since I'm gonna be using the guitar directly into the sound interface, I'm gonna have to use a NAMP simulator within Cubase as an insert plugin on that electric guitar track. And in this case, I'm gonna to have to monitor through Cubase with a low buffer size. I hope this is not too confusing for you because it is very important to understand the concept of latency when recording in a recording software like Cubase. And that goes for MIDI recording as well. When recording MIDI, I tend to keep my buffer size at the lowest possible. Now we're ready to record some electric guitar with my good friend, Jimmy Le. Um, so let's start by plugging in the quarter inch cable. So what I am gonna do, I'm gonna plug that into the second input of the URRT4. And now for this session, the way we're gonna work, I wanna keep that simple. And instead of using an amp and miking a guitar amp, I'm just gonna take the guitar and just plug it in directly into the sound uh, interface. Okay, and we're gonna use a virtual guitar amp within Cubase. So let's set this up in Cubase by creating ourselves a new audio track. Now, this one, I am gonna um, create a stereo track, even if it's a mono signal, and I'm gonna explain to you why in a few seconds. So let's call this one elec git, and I'm gonna create on add track. I'm going to change the color of the track to orange, with, which is my go-to color for electric guitar. Um, now, like we've seen earlier, I'm going to activate the monitor switch so we can monitor the, uh, the sound right away. So, Jim, if you, will, if you want to test this out. So, perfect. So, so, we have some signal coming in. Now, I'm going to insert a virtual amp. Um, from Steinberg. It's a stock plugin that comes with Cubase. And let's go with, um, this one is called the VST Amp Rack, uh, which is a pretty cool um, guitar amp. So there's different kinds of uh, model cabinets, amplifiers, uh, there's some uh, pre-effects and post-effects. Um, so it's, you know, pretty well done, even different types of microphones that you can choose from, which is quite nice. So I already worked on a preset, so I'm just gonna load it. There you go. So go ahead, Jim, you wanna try this out? So cool, so now the reason why I created myself a stereo track, um, it's basically because that plugin is a stereo plugin and the way I wanna use it on this session is as a stereo effect. Since I'm, uh, um, I'm adding some delays and reverb, 
uh, directly on that plugin. So I just wanted to have that uh, stereo delay effect. Um, but there's nothing wrong on using this plugin in mono and getting that mono delay that works as well. So just a personal preference. So let's go with this and we are gonna start by laying down our first guitar take. So now I'm done with the electric guitar. So let's go and record some acoustic guitar. What I'm gonna do here, I am gonna mic Jimmy's guitar. Um, I could definitely just plug it in directly into the interface uh, since Jimmy has a pickup um, that can easily be done. Even very practical when you're just writing down some ideas out of your home, uh, just plugging your guitar directly into the interface is a very good option. It doesn't sound as good as micing a guitar, so this is why I'm just gonna mic the guitar right away. Uh, but you could just use it directly into the interface. So uh, let's plug that into channel three. So what I'm doing here is I'm aiming um, not the whole of the guitar because it's a bit too muddy at this point, but I'm aiming the maybe like around the 12th fret of the uh, the guitar neck so there you go at around maybe like 12 inches between 8 and 12 inches to start with and when i'm recording an album i'm gonna you know spend a bit more time to find the sweet spots but for now i think that will do it okay now we're ready to record some acoustic guitars so let's create ourselves some tracks i'm gonna create two tracks um, i'm gonna select input three out of my interface since my guitar cable is plugged into that um, that input and i'm going to call this one a cc1 create two click on add track and there you go i have my two tracks already routed into the correct inputs i'm going to select blue light blue which is my go-to color for acoustic guitars and i'm going to test the uh the gain level uh, but first i'm going to put my headphones on because we're miking the guitar and i don't want um, the audio out of my speakers at the same time we're recording some guitars in the same room with a microphone or else i'm just going to run into some feedbacks and this is not what i want so let me grab a pair of headphones there you go and same for jimmy you're good jim yep all right so let's test this out go ahead jim let's start play all right so we're good the level is good so let's start recording So let's record the second take. So that's why I created myself two tracks to record the guitars because I just want to record an extra take with maybe with a different voicing. We did experiment a few things before, so let's record that second track, Jim. And actually what I'm going to do with the first one, I'm just going to bring it down a bit. I'm going to pan it to the left and let's try this out. Okay, now we're ready to record some vocals. And I have my good friend Andy in the back, Andréanne Lafleur. Let's do it. We're gonna try one take. We're gonna record a couple of takes.
right, my friends, this is going to be it for this video. I hope that was helpful. If so, share and like this video. And again, if you're new here on the CCLI YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe to the channel and to click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Stay tuned because on the next video, I'm going to show you how you can rough mix your song, export it, and then send it to your worship team or your friends. Until next time, see you.